I'm Bianca, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Tracy, and I'm a level three chef. I would watch my grandmother cook, and that's how this recipe came to be. I'm no Julia Child, but it is edible. It's a recipe that I kind of messed up for years. I stuck with it. I've been making this yeast raised dough recipe for a very long time. It's gonna be super fluffy and light on the inside and caramelized and crunchy on the outside. So first we'll make our batter and we'll start with the dry ingredients. My family, they generally cook with feeling, which means they tend to stay away from recipes. This is my Belgian waffle batter mix. I'm actually gonna start with all purpose flour, flour the sugar, sugar, baking, baking powder, powder, and just a dash of salt to give it a bit of a kick. We are making a Belgian style liege waffle that's gonna be risen with active dry yeast instead of baking powder. And then we're gonna add our dark brown sugar. I love to make donuts and this is basically a donut but in waffle form. I am gonna get the wet ingredients. Egg to help the batter get, oh shit. <laughs> Salt breaks down the proteins in your eggs and it's gonna make for a fluffier waffle. All right, your whisk. We're gonna add our two eggs, eggs vanilla, vanilla extract, whole milk. And I'm gonna use a fresh vanilla bean. I like using these whenever I have the chance. You're gonna get way more vanilla flavor. And I also like that the vanilla beans kind of speckle throughout the waffle just to kind of brighten up your dough. I'm gonna use yogurt. And this is vanilla, but it could be strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, put it in. One of the biggest things that I was just messing up, it was always sticking to the waffle maker. It's because I wasn't putting enough butter. The butter has solidified. Half a cup of melted butter. We're gonna add our room temperature butter that's been chopped into small pieces. This is muy importante. Back in action, blend all the ingredients so it can be creamy and thick. And that kind of do a little bop, makes me feel more like an adult. I don't think you can do too much whisking to make it just right, you know? I don't want to really overwork the batter. If you over mix your dough, it's actually going to become too difficult to work with and it's going to have too firm of our gluten strands. Nice and creamy. So now that our dough has come together, we're going to take it and put it in a new bowl and then we're going to let it rest in the fridge overnight. Now we're ready to cook our waffles with a classic waffle maker. Get two thirds cup, put it directly in the center. What's already sizzling. I love a good sexy waffle. So this is our dough that has sat overnight. We want to start by kneading our full sugar in. I'm gonna portion this into three ounce waffles. So that way every waffle is about the same size. And maybe just give it a little press down. You actually should not have to add any Pam or spray to it because there's so much butter in the dough. Voila. I usually cook the waffles maybe three to five minutes. Oh, it's spilling. It's definitely supposed to spill out of the sides like that. <laughs> I can actually smell the vanilla in it right now. It's fantastic. We want to make sure the waffle maker is hot enough that our pearl sugar actually caramelizes. Okay, I'm actually sweating. This is like... Because these are a dough, not a batter, you can actually check these before they get oh, too dark. Okay. Wasn't ready yet. So don't be afraid of opening it before it's ready. My grandmother would be so embarrassed. I'm sorry. You want to make sure that it has deep enough pockets. This one's about one and a quarter inch, which is what you're looking for. Here goes a bat signal. Thank you for doing your job. Ah, oh. <laughs> I need a little bit more batter. I just like complete full crevices. But hey, wait, wait, wait a minute now. That's not bad. This is looking great. We have nice crispy edges, a soft pillowy inside, and we have our pull sugar all the way around our waffle. And there you go. Nice and golden. Hooray! I'm so proud of myself, okay. It reminds me of funnel cakes at the fair. And now we're ready to move on to our toppings. My favorite part. I'm actually gonna make a sauce to complement our delicious waffle. It's easy peasy, actually, because it's a one, two, three, four kind of combo. One cup of fruit, two tablespoons of water, three teaspoons of sugar, then four hefty squeezes of lemon juice. So for toppings, I like to have my syrup and strawberries. It's one of my favorite fruits. A couple of them have burst open already. We're just gonna let this go for a little bit. So I've decided to pair my Belgian waffles with a homemade toffee sauce, which is basically like a darker, richer caramel. So we're gonna start with some dark brown sugar. Then we're gonna add some heavy cream, some butter, and some salt. Hello, blueberry compote. <laughs> That's so stupid, I'm sorry. So after about 10 minutes, your sauce should have thickened. Turn the heat off and you wanna actually add your vanilla extract. Here's our fresh toffee sauce. <clears throat> so we have our waffles. 
and then, well, I guess we can just pick these strawberries up, huh? So, I just happen to have <laughs> a block of milk chocolate. That's like chocolate snow, it's beautiful. So we have our toffee sauce, and then our homemade speculose spread, or as we know in the United States, cookie butter. So we're taking our homemade speculose cookies and we made some cookie crumbs. A little rinse here, water, and then we're gonna add some cinnamon. Make sure this is nice and dissolved. Let this cool down to room temperature. And then we're gonna add some refined coconut oil. And then I'm gonna use an immersion blender to make sure it becomes a nice smooth spread. You're gonna just put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. This is as pretty as it's gonna get, I guess. <laughs> We're gonna have some freshly whipped cream, add some nice confectioner sugar. I wanna be able to put my whipped cream directly on top of the waffle and for it to actually hold a shape. This is what we call firm peaks. You don't wanna keep going from here because you'll end up with butter. And then we add our maple syrup. Product shot, yeah. <laughs> it looks really good. Nice and even, piping throughout all those little holes. This is the toffee sauce we made earlier. Drizzle it all around our waffle. This is good old Cool Whip. Plop that right there. Plop, 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 and a plop. We've got a handful of this delicious shaved chocolate. All the way around, finish our waffle. Bloop. Sound effects and all. So excited to taste this. This is my Belgium waffle. Delicioso. And here we have our Belgian liege waffle. Time to dig in. <laughs> okay. Mm. It's not half bad. Mm -mm. Delicious. Oh, that's really good. I didn't do anything special. I just followed the recipe, didn't I? <laughs> Super happy with how this waffle came out. The toffee sauce gives it a little bit of a maple-y flavor. You get crunch from the pearl sugar and the whipped cream just bounces all together. Wouldn't serve it to my grandmother, but not half bad. I'll give myself a little pat on the back. We saw three different chefs make three different waffles. Bianca and Lorenzo made quick bread style waffles, and Tracy made a yeast leavened waffle. Bianca and Lorenzo's quick bread style waffles used baking powder, which is a chemical leavener that leavened the batter instantly. Baking powder produces carbon dioxide gas as soon as it's combined with liquid. The carbon dioxide will aerate the batter and make the waffles fluffy. This is gonna make you have a beautiful fluffy waffle. Tracy made a yeasted waffle dough by leavening the waffle mixture with yeast instead of baking powder. As the yeast metabolizes the sugar in the dough, carbon dioxide gas is produced and the dough rises slowly. Tracy allowed her dough to rise overnight, developing a rich and malty flavor. When making their waffle batters, Bianca and Lorenzo both use the muffin method. The wet and dry ingredients are mixed separately. The wet ingredients are then added to the dry ingredients and stirred until just combined. As I make a mess. Tracy made a dough rather than a batter. She combined the wet ingredients and sugar and then added the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients to form a dough. She enriched the dough by slowly adding cubes of butter. Bianca and Lorenzo chose all-purpose all flour. flour. All-purpose flour has a moderate amount of gluten, which is the protein found in wheat flour. Lower protein flours will yield a tender crumb. Tracy used a combination of all-purpose and high gluten flour. More gluten creates tunnels throughout the matrix of the waffle mixture, similar to the structure of bread. I recommend doing this on a low speed so you don't get a big flour shower when you turn your machine on. The gluten produces a strong dough and a chewier crumb. The addition of fat, like the butter Tracy used, will shorten the crumb, giving it a softer texture. Waffles contain more fat and eggs than pancakes, which contributes to their tenderness and improves the integrity of their shape when subjected to the heat of a waffle iron. All of our chefs preheated their waffle irons. A moderate heat will ensure an even rate of cooking on the inside as well as the outside of the waffles, yielding a soft interior and crisp exterior like Lorenzo and Tracy's waffles. Bianca used an American style square waffle maker and Lorenzo and Tracy used a Belgian waffle maker. The square waffle maker has shallow pockets and produces a thinner waffle than the Belgian waffle maker. The Belgian waffle maker has deep pockets and produces a thicker and fluffier waffle. This is my least favorite step. Bianca overfilled her waffle iron, Lorenzo underfilled his, and Tracy added just enough dough. I told you I was level one. 
tried to told you. The waffle molds should be partially filled before they are closed to avoid spillage. The pressure from the top waffle plate will spread the batter throughout the mold, creating an even shape. So I don't want it to come out a weird shape. When it comes to cooking waffles, the more moisture in the batter, the shorter the cook time. Bianca's waffle batter has the highest amount of moisture and will require the least amount of cook time. Lorenzo's waffle batter is moderately thick from the addition of yogurt and has less moisture. And Tracy's waffle dough has the least amount of moisture and will take the longest to cook through completely. At-home waffle makers take a lot of guessing out of waffle cooking, but the suggested cook time is just an approximation. Depending on the viscosity of your batter, your waffles might not be crisp when the appliance indicates it's done. Another way to determine if your waffle is done is to use steam as an indicator. During the cooking, water in the batter will heat and turn to steam. When the steam stops escaping from the side of the waffle iron, most of the water has been evaporated and the waffle is cooked through. After all of the steam escapes, leave the waffle inside for a few seconds longer to allow the outside ridges of the waffle to crisp. The sugar present in the waffle mix will caramelize and help produce the brown color on the outside of the waffles. Bianca and Lorenzo used a moderate amount of sugar and will have a small amount of caramelization on the outside of their waffles. They're gonna ask for more, I'm telling you right now. Tracy added pearl sugar into her waffle batter before cooking. This will increase the amount of caramelization and produce a golden brown final product. Our chefs each used unique sauces to top their waffles. Bianca used maple syrup, Lorenzo crafted a blueberry compote and paired it with whipped topping, maple syrup, and chocolate shavings. And Tracy made speculo spread, whipped cream, and toffee sauce for her waffles. Bianca and Lorenzo's lightly sweetened waffles pair well with the sweet sauces they chose. Ooh, one time for Bianca. As my friend says, it's still gonna get it. The strong dough that Tracy used produced a sturdy waffle, which can bear the weight of sauces and toppings. Tracy's waffle is considerably sweeter, so pairing the waffles with a very sweet topping can make the final dish very decadent. The balance of textures and warm spices in Tracy's toppings will help to balance the sweetness of the dish. When is it not a good time to have waffles? Waffles are a fun dish to make at home. You can use some of these tips to make a quick breakfast or an indulgent dessert.